to see how this camera angle works. So, I'm going to work on my tablet weave. I brought it outside because we have beautiful sunshine out today. So I just had it all bundled up, hanging in the spot I've been working inside. And I wanted you to see how I get everything set to get started. So, tilt this way for a moment. So I just have been hooking it to my belt. Um, and ideally, this part that's closest to the rest of the work will stay as flat as possible. Um, so I actually pass that through the D-rings of my belt before tying it off so that it doesn't get scrunched up. And scoop forward so that I'm reaching to a comfortable area. And then... I'll wrap it around again and tie it off. Alright. So, I'm doing what's called the ram's horn pattern, um, which is not necessarily super old historically, but it's super beautiful. Um, this is the nice shuttle that my sweetheart made for me. I was using just a piece of cardboard. This is carved out of alder. Cardboard worked just fine, it just wouldn't have lasted super long because it's pretty weak. Um, and I cut my cards from a pancake box. So obviously you don't have to have a ton of money um, or stuff to get into this craft, which is great because I don't like carrying a bunch of things with me and I don't have that much money. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is like a backstrap loom style weave um, where my tension is determined by how I'm sitting. Um, so you can lean or scoot your chair back until you're at a point where you have nice tension. Um, so I've got my cards all ready to go. Um, the numbers of the writing are facing to the right on this one. And this is what they look like for me at the start of um, like a round or a set of twists. Um, I have some of them marked with little yellow post-it tabs that I taped on. Those are ones that I flip a different way for the pattern some of the time. Um, that just makes them easy to see so that I know I'm flipping the right ones. Um, and then I've just been writing down which part of the pattern I'm on. Um, I'm mirroring it every so often because otherwise if I keep going the same direction I build up a lot of tension further up the warp threads um, and that gets tricky to deal with. So um, with my pattern I've got these little spirals. I've been doing four spirals and then flipping direction and then four and then flipping direction. Um, so I kind of have a set of forward instructions, which are the main pattern notes that I got from the internet, and then a backward set as well, where I just reverse everything. Um, so let's see, right now I'm going forward, and I'm on my mixed set of four turns, where some go forward and some go back. So go ahead and get started. So what I do to go forward, or you know, the mix forward, this, these rows um, are the unmarked cards get rotated forward a quarter turn, and the marked cards come back a quarter turn. Um, if you have nicer cards, like made out of wood or something, they're usually a little bigger, and you can be a little more careless with how you flip them, um, but with these just being light cardboard, I have to kind of hold them um, pretty specifically to make sure they don't twist on me or flip around. Um, like when I first started this, I did this like stretchy thing that I saw people do in the videos with wooden cards, but I pulled things out too far and some of my cards flipped around and it screwed up my pattern and I had to go back and undo it. Um, so depending on what you're working with, just be, be gentle with your cards. Um, and then you can see I kind of hold them 
so that my pointer finger creates a base to work from for flipping. And so I pull them back and then pivot them on that finger um, so that they move together as one unit and, and move neatly. Um, and you kind of keep an eye out as you go to make sure the yarn doesn't catch. Sometimes it'll catch around a corner. You just have to make sure it gets loosened back up and, and back on track where it's supposed to be. So these mixed rows take a little bit longer because I'm moving, moving things different directions. So in here I'm looking at the underside. Um, this one thread is um, tucked over the corner, and you can kind of feel that underneath. So I just check it now and then. Okay, so that was one twist. So that has changed my shed, which is my opening here, um, which means different threads are going to be up and down from what they were before I twisted. So now I'm going to kind of separate them and put my shuttle in and beat the weft. Um, and then it's also called the fell, is the, like the fresh area that hasn't been woven in yet. So I'm holding the shuttle down and then the warp or the weft thread that went through before I turned them, I left this loop out to the side and that's because you need those new threads holding that weft in before you can actually tighten it down properly and get nice even tension. So now that I'm holding it down with the shuttle, I'm going to slowly pull this until just the right amount comes through. And what happens if you don't do that is that your band will want to get narrower because you'll want to pull it tight and it'll skew your warp threads. Um, I did that for the first few inches. Um, before seeing in a video and having somebody explain that that's why you did it that way. And then I switched and it got much more uniform. Um, so now I'm leaving a loop to the side. My new weft thread is in and I'm going to do my next set of twists. So my plain cards go forward, my marked cards go backward. And I just kind of bundle everything together, smooth it along down the line to open up the new shed. Open it up with my fingers, beat it with the shuttle, pull the last layer through, and put in my new thread. Then this is the third time, blank goes forward. Marked comes back. Blank goes forward. Marked comes back. This is my fourth turn, so you're going to see the yellow tabs coming back up to the top, and that tells me that after this round of flips is finished, it'll be time to switch to my other, um, my other row of the pattern. forward row four times. So now we just go all the cards forward four times, which goes much faster.
back up again. So that set of four is already done. Okay, quick. Okay, so now I've got one, two, three and a half spirals. So I'm going to mark that that row is finished, that set of four. So we're going to do a mixed set again, and then we'll be ready to start our mirroring pattern, flip the spirals the other way. Okay, and if you're ever thinking you might have flipped stuff the wrong way, you can just check with the rest of the cards to make sure they're all lined up the same way. my fourth turn for this part of the pattern. So the yellow is going to be coming back up. Okay. So now we're going to mirror the pattern. Um, so we've got our four spirals going one direction and the last set of four that we did was the mixed set. So now we have to do the mixed set going backwards. So before the unmarked cards went forward. Now they're going to go back. And before the marked cards went backward, so now they're going to go forward. And that's all we do, is just exactly reverse it. So when you change directions like that, you are going to notice that that row of stitching is going to be slightly longer than the others, and that's totally normal. So if it looks funny as you're doing that first flipped round, don't worry about it too much. You can also see, well, I don't know if you can tell from there, the tension is a little uneven because I'm leaning this way. So that's another reason that we want this secured flat to something around your waist is so that you have even tension across the band, otherwise it'll end up kind of curving one direction or the other. 
So just pay attention to that as you're setting everything up and have it as even as possible. This is my fourth twist, so the yellow is going to be coming back up to the top. So now we have to move on to our other type of pattern which is moving all the cards the same direction. So now instead of moving them all forward, we move them all backward. And we'll do that four times. like last time, the rows where everything's going the same direction go a lot faster. So now we already have one nice set of spirals going the other direction. And you can see, so this, this time we mirrored on a mixed row, and that's, it creates this pattern where the points of the spirals come together, whereas last time Hopefully you can see this. Last time it flipped on an all cards together row, so it went from being all backwards or forwards to the other way around instead of on the mixed row. And that created the, the base of the spirals being connected rather than the points. So you'll get two varieties unless you always wait until the same exact spot to flip. Um, but I kind of like having both options of mirroring in there. And you can you can do it other ways too. You can not do the um, mixed row and you can create like weird little loops and um, all different kinds of variations on this pattern. There's a lot of different options with tablet weaving. Okay, so now I'm back on a mixed row. So plain cards go back and marked cards go forward. So you can see the, the action of it, the actual weaving is not that difficult. Um, in some ways the setup is a lot trickier. Um, so you have to understand more about it to get it all set up properly. And once I finish this belt, I will make a video of setting it up. And you can see if you're not doing too crazy of a pattern, if you can remember where you're at, you can watch a movie or um, have music going, have other stuff going on while you do this. That's not that big of a deal. Just 
caught on each other. And this, the warp threads wrapping around the corner of the card like that, I think is because when, uh, when we stretched out and cut our warp threads, um, each of the different colors of yarn has slightly different amounts of twist and tension to it. Um, and so even though we tried to hold them about the same tension as we cut, they're each slightly different. And so the ones that are a little bit more loose tend to um, kind of grab around the corners of the cards like that. So just have to watch out for them and keep unhooking them when they misbehave. So you can see the yellows back up, so that's the end of that set of four. So I'll just switch to all back. back up already. So that's the end of that set. Now we have two beautiful sets of spirals going in the new direction. And this is what it makes. Nice, beautiful belt.